I had no, I've no communication with <coughs> uh, transmission. What I do see is starter switch here off. So I'm gonna, I'll press the starter switch, right? I'm gonna press that, turn this to starter switch on. So leave it off, on. So it seemed the button pressed. What I do see here is starter relay can signal disable starter relay duty cycle disable and then over here starter starter duty signal high mode disable that's changing it's going to enable disable enable you know starter relay duty signal condition invalid so i'd say it's not doesn't like the signal it's getting from the actual I'd say the transmission because I'd say this thing will not allow allow it to be started unless it's in the neutral position. Um, so right now what I'd be saying is that we're I have to get wiring diagrams. I had a look at all of that there. I have no wiring diagrams, so I'm going to go try and get my wiring diagrams. Technical helpline that I have. I'm going to make a phone call um, and try and get wiring diagrams emailed to me. If I can get wiring di diagrams for this, I can see what's happening out there. Right now, I have nothing. I've only air conditioning on auto data, um, so I have to try try somewhere else. But that's where we stand right now. So I'm going to go after yeah wiring diagrams. The starter motor relay one. Starter motor relay two. Push button switch at the starter. That's the inhibitor. It's kind of a little bit of a complex system. I have, I'm gonna turn on the key. That's actually the ignition switch. When I turn on the key, I get a power going into this fuse box and I get powers We've now gone into our engine control module. But when I press the button here, what that does is it gives me, I should have power coming down in this wire into the switch. I have power coming down here, or I should have power coming down here, out up and in, into the engine control module here. Um, and it's coming around and up and into the inhibitor here. When I press the button, I get a click. So I'm assuming it's that working. But that joke then should be giving me a ground because this wire SW here is coming up and it's clicking. If it's coming from this one, it's internal in a fuse box or something. I can hear a click, but I can't find a relay. I don't know just by time, but I'm basically I'm trying to understand my wiring diagrams. There's no point in me telling you lies at this point. That's I'm doing a little bit of homework. But anyway, I basically press button, it livens that joke. That inhibitor. Then that sends a power up. This wire and over to relay number two over here also sends it over and up to relay number one here. Uh, when you press the button over here, it also sends power as I said, into the engine control module. The engine control module sees this. If it's happy and everything is in neutral and stuff, it sends a power down this wire across here, up, down, and into that relay, which sends then power down out across this wire, the grey wire, all the way over and down into the starter motor, into that relay. It also is controlled by that same wire coming out of the bottom. Where we're going out of the bottom of the engine control module that was going up to relay one up here. It's also going across and over and up into this relay. So it's quite a little complex system. There is the starter motor sitting here. A little bit complex, but anyway, look, we'll I go hunting and testing and see where we end up. <clears throat> Just to show fast, anyway, we have. Let's try to pinpoint where I am. I have that P0801, which is clutch. This is in transmission. Uh, P0810, clutch operation problem. Also, I have this. Um, I've created this. Pay no attention. Shift actuator more motor ground line open. I've created that. I pull wires off the top of the uh, gearbox just to try and see. I was trying to find the, tra the transmission control module. Um, what I've had and what I've had all along was that F can malfunction. I've created that. I've created that. I've also had that F can malfunction. Um, so I've created a lot, a lot of these. I've had that one all along and these two F cans and there was something else 
some other one was inside it, I don't know which, can't remember which one. But anyway, just to show you where the transmission control module was, have it inside in the workshop, and have a couple of bits thrown on the ground, the under tray, the under tray came off it, and this steel box was housed or up, up there at the front, this box is hanging around there. Up at the front, there's a cross member, there's the gearbox, it's housed up here. There's a clutch master cylinder hanging out of it. This steel frame was sitting around it. Not an easy, not terribly easy and straightforward to get out. I had to remove the battery, if we can see it. I had to remove the battery up above it uh, to get down at a couple of bolts. And now I'm at the pulling out more, a couple more bolts. I'm about to pull off this hydraulic pipe off the clutch slave cylinder that's sitting up there. Um, and I also took off the, the brake fluid feed down to it. Basically what's happening is the transmission control module is changing gears and it's pressing the clutch. We have a clutch operation problem. I don't, can't actually tell you for a fact, but I don't believe it's anything to do with the clutch itself inside in it. Um, I do think that it's inside in this module. We have to get in. This F can is kind of like a, a CAN bus. And Jay's lights or something flashing to it. It's a CAN bus kind of a signal that I'm, I'm losing communication. I have communication now in a couple of seconds or maybe a minute or so, it'll lose communication and I'll retry and I'll get back in. So I'm just trying to show you where this thing is. I'm going to get in, really awkward. The wires are going in from the, the top of, of, of that box underneath the battery. So I want to get in and I want to try and see what the heck is, is happening in this box. I'm dismantling the box, it's about five, six, seven, eight bolts sitting around and I'm on the last one here now, but I just wanted to give an input of what I'm going into. I'm trying to get into the transmission control module is inside that. It's not only motors on top of the gearbox, it's not a part of the gearbox. Keep going. Okay. We have found the transmission control module. It's tied into this clutch master cylinder. As I said, we'll turn around back the same direction as we are. It's bolted up here. Front, front lower cross member. There's a wheel there, wing liner. Bolt up here, all the residue and stuff gone off it. But that's it, or into it. What I do recognize when I pull it off, my scan table is sitting here on the shelf. I have communication at this point in time. If I, oh, if I disconnect that block connector, we have kind of wet marks in there. It's not drowned in there by any means, but I have wet marks in there. Um, and slightly moisturized, hard to see. Slightly wet. Inside the pins, not, not in that plug. We have, um, I've disconnected that block connector there. I also have, oh, I still have Still have communication now. Of course. We're starting to get our, our lock, but we have um, communication at this point, right? Just to show you, I'm, I'm back probing the can wires. I don't know if you can see them. Here is a pink, sorry, a white and a red one that we're actually back probing in there, okay? They're the can lines. And don't we Go up here, sorry about the glare. I've been trying to get move around to get rid of it, but I can't. Um, you can see the change in voltage there. If I zoom out, you can see it very prominent here in our can line. So the, the voltage, which is there, is getting bigger here. It's kind of the same up there, so they are slightly mimicking each other. But I don't know whether that's right or wrong, or good or bad. If I zoom in, it gets probably more, and I see now. Can I get a more, a more prominent uh, screenshot of this? I'm going, we're going around here. Okay, we we'll zoom in. Now we can see, move that cursor out right of that line. You can see it, it fairly obvious here where the voltage is jumping. The lines, the cursor, sorry, are, it's only giving us this voltage and this voltage here when we look down here, but it's been pulled Should be going from two and a, two and a half to one and a half, and this one should be going from two and a half to three and a half. What we're getting is the top one has been pulled to three point four. The bottom one has been pulled down to one point four. That's here, 
Now over here then we'll go back where it actually moved on it. Right. It is being pulled, it's going then. The top one is, sorry, from 3.4 volts is the highest. And then on the bottom one we're being pulled down to 1.48. But I don't know if I have an issue with my can signal here on that and that's back probing at the control module. I'm going to disconnect the control module to see what the signal does, okay? One little piece that I saw when I was trying to disassemble and change my brushes was to take out this plug. I couldn't figure it out, but it's it's simple and in front of you, but it didn't show on the other video. If that comes apart, that'll just pull up, okay? So this leg is what's holding it. Two outside pins on the motor make this thing work. Swaps it around. It'll spin one way. Just swap the polarity. Oop, and it'll work the opposite way, okay? I don't want to be doing it. And you can see that it's working both ways.